Welcome to Cine Latino in Casa, Cine Latino at Home, October 15 to 22, uh, a unique program of the newest award-winning Spanish and Portuguese language films from around the globe, presented by the MSP Film Society, the regional exhibitor of international independent cinema since 1963. We know you will enjoy the show, available virtually this year at mspfilm.org and hope you can spread the word. In this year of great change and uncertainty, your engagement is more important than ever, provided critical support to your favorite nonprofit or arts organization and to the artists, communities, and cultures reflected in the stories told. Again, thank you. Gracias. Obrigado. So now we're going to join the amazing director of one of our stellar documentaries at this year's Cine Latino at Home. Please welcome the director of the painting, El Cuadro, Andrés Sanz. Bienvenido, Andrés. Gracias, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. And um, there's so many questions I have for the film. The first one is going to be, and we get a hint in the film, when did your obsession with Las Meninas begin? Well, the obsession, obsession, I guess, started when I decided to make the film. Uh, that is when I got to very obsessed, both because I had to make the, uh, a film about this great work of art um, but the, I think the interest became very early when I was a kid. Um, this particular picture is a very, very famous, very celebrated image in, um, in the Spanish culture. I mean, in, in the cult, in, particularly in, in, you know, in my country, everyone knows this image. It's everywhere. Um, so we grow up with this one. We go to the Prado Museum and we see the 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 meninas las meninas uh, the very first thing we see when we are five and we are four when we are three years old so um i guess i got i was very interested particularly in las meninas because the way i saw the painting when i was a kid because it was in a special room and the documentary starts particularly in that specific time in a specific place because it was magical you have to understand that there, I was very little and I entered in a room where there was only one painting and everyone in the painting were, were, were looking at us and we were looking at them mm. and they were in a room and we were in a room and also there was a mirror behind us so we could see ourselves reflected in the mirror as we, if we were in the room with them. So I didn't understand at all what, were ha what was happening in that room when I was a kid. So um, I, I always got a little bit, you know, I would say obsessed Matt, but about the magical thing of the, of the, the painting, the mirror, the, the room. Uh, so for many years, I, you know, I, study, I study art and painting many years later, and also a little bit of art history. So when, it happened that in, in, when it was 2013, I think, I went to see an exhibition at the Prado Museum about Velázquez. Mm. It was the, the, the last decade of Velázquez. So they brought all the paintings that he painted in, in the, uh, I think it was 1650, uh, 60, 1650. And, when I saw that exhibition, I got hooked with Velázquez again. I was like, wow, you know, I always loved it, but I, I realized how incredible this painter was. And so I went to pick up some book about Las Meninas, about Velázquez again, and I found a, a very interesting book in the library. And I started again to read about Las Meninas. And by chance, I met some historians in a cafe. <laughs> We started to talk about Las Meninas, and one of them that what, that is actually in the in the film, Diaz Padrón, he he said, "Why no one has made a film about this painting?" And I thought, well, someone 
surely has made the film by Las Meninas. I went back home, I checked, <laughs> nobody has made a film about, a feature film about this painting. So I thought, what if I do it? I got a little bit scared at the beginning, but then I thought, why not? I mean, I, I, I thought about the, the idea of the challenge of making a docu documentary, I never made a documentary before, the challenge of making a film about a very famous painting, but how can I present it in a way that it could be fresh? And the challenge of, of making a, a film about a subject matter I love, you know, film, painting, art history, and this is the result. Man, it took me six years. I have to say, you succeeded in all of those challenges that you had. And I have to say, the other thing is, this was your first feature film. I mean, you know, you'd done shorts before. And, you know, I was surprised when I was, you know, rereading your bio because I thought, well, you know, this is the work of someone who had been doing films forever. Uh, but let's go in, in steps because now you have the challenge or, you know, this idea of making this documentary about Las Meninas. But you found a way of playing with the representation of representation in such a, you know, joyful and again, playful uh, uh, manner with the device of the stop motion included. And also this whole idea of playing the mystery. This is a thriller. This is the scene of a crime and we're going to uh, get witnesses. Uh, and you devise this room that looks like, you know, an interrogation room. And so when was this different idea, when all these different ideas started to sort of sh uh, get shaped up? Um, it was something that you, you know, decided immediately, was something that, you know, came up afterwards. Because I, th I think it's brilliant. And I watch it again and again, and it's just like, it's such a great way of really showing this amazing reflection about, you know, the art of representation for the last, you know, 2000 years, you know, not even uh, when, when the painting was done. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I guess that it came in a very organically, I guess, um, the idea of the mystery which I think is central, was the way I experienced the, the painting myself. Um, I experienced it this way. I, I was reading, I, I mean, I read for many years when I was studying painting uh, uh, at the fine arts uh, school, when I was studying photography and filmmaking. During all these years, I was reading about this painting, about Velasquez, and I always, came out with, the, every time I finished a book, I thought, okay, this is solved. There's nothing else to say about this painting. Then I read another article and I realized, how can I, I miss this? I mean, this is all this stuff. I never thought about it. Then I read another book about it and then there's new stuff all the time. So my experience was like a mystery, like a, a detective continues investigation and never ends. There's always something that destroys the previous theory because something else, something new comes up. It's like an Agatha Christie, uh, you know, murder mystery. And so that was something I had in my mind very clearly. I have to tell the story the way I, I experience myself this painting, like a mystery. I am also, I'm trying to unreveal unre and, 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 and solve. Then the rest of the, the things that I put in the film, all the work around the off camera and the characters looking at you and I'm looking at them, myself also, the investigation, all the quotes of cinema and other, you know, uh, visual arts. That comes from my um, reflection on the painting. It's a painting about representation. There is a creator who has created that particular work of art inside the work of art. He's painting a picture we don't see. It may be the same picture we are looking at, or maybe not. 
then we discover that the painting may, it may be about somebody who is reflected in the mirror behind. So all these things have to be about, it's, it's like a game of boxes inside boxes, which is something I really loved, um, stories inside the stories. So I had to come up with an idea, a game, a setup for the spectator to enter into the picture, but also to enter in my film and to make some kind of a mirror game, you know, of reflections. So I have to be there in the film as Velasquez is in the painting, but not in a very intrusive way. And also I'm, the girl in the picture is my own daughter. So it's, it's a personal film in a way. It's like, it's, there are a lot of personal things in the film about myself. And I thought that it's like Velasquez did with, with the painting. And also um, I had a, for me it was an opportunity to talk to very interesting people mm. about something that we share and a, a same interest about this, this uh, painter and this work. And I thought, what if I can recreate the experience of me talking to them so they could talk to the spectator? And also if I can bring the emotion while we are you know, sharing this experience of chatting and talking, that would be the goal, but I, that was probably the most difficult part because these are you know, people from the academia. They are, they are scholars. They're used to talking classrooms. They have a very you know, closed image and I have to seduce them, try to break that. Um, and the most important thing is that I have to make them trust me. Mm. And I had to dedicate a lot of work to investigate so we can, you know, have a real conversation. And finally, it seems all very intellectual and very dry, but I have to come up with a very entertaining film. Mm. So how can I put together all this? Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of friction, a lot of work and, you know, and a lot of thinking. During pre, you know, pre-production, during the interviews and the editing. So, so where, when did this stop motion and the use of this, you know, sort of a small, uh, you know, sets of the sets and the characters, you know, being played by, you know, the, 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 the puppets. I mean, it's just, again, you're playing with the representation of the representation. It's just, you know, I think it's brilliant. And, and you did it because, you know, you did your animation. It, seems at least yeah. you know this is so you know you you directed you wrote it and also um you edited and made the animated part so yeah kudos but uh when when that part came up also i guess i it came from the very beginning i i thought about the stop motion because i have to see i was making a film not an essay so i was not writing a, a book about las meninas another one mm. Um, how can I make a film? How can I represent that world of Velázquez? But I didn't want to have actors playing the role with the costumes and, you know, sets. <laughs> we didn't have the money, but also it's like, I, I, I thought it was pointless. You don't really believe it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's very theatrical, but it's all, it's just, it doesn't work. I thought if I can use puppets, it's obviously something we, it's not real. Mm. But I think that as, you know, it's, it's very also very theatrical, but I think the spectator could understand it as a, a staging of, as, as I said, like a mystery. So we, we create a, 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 you know, a set a model and we put together the figures and we, and we think about what could have happened in that room. But then it becomes very magical because I always loved the world, the work of the Quay brothers, mm. the animators and filmmakers. I think they're geniuses. And I thought, this is my opportunity to do some stop motion. <laughs> so why not? And I think it, you know, it was challenging because I have to do a lot of things by myself and I never, I, ne I mean, I did some animation in some shorts, but I, that was the first time I was doing puppetry and wow. stop motion. So. Wow. Um if it's the first time, I mean, 
next project could be all only animation and you know you'll be amazing well so, i had a lot of i have a lot of help also from javier uh, with the the dp the director of photography because all the magical lighting and all that you know was it was very very important we couldn't use we couldn't move too much the puppets we didn't have enough time and and you also use i mean like of course the the um experts you gather uh, and they are all fantastic um characters themselves the way they speak about the the the, the painting and their very strong opinions they have i love the woman who says like yeah, it's a painting come on stop you know creating stories about it it's not film it's painting but you always feel that there is something so cinematic about this painting you know for all the reasons that you stated and that you know people have seen in the in the film um so now is the 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 question is you know you have you know this um you know this this uh, experts and you have the the, the puppets but you also added very cool archive films that I thought also give a glimpse of, you know, people trying to get into this world. And some of the films are, you know, very mucky. Uh, I mean, like they're fun in a way, but, um, you know, how was that process of finding, you know, those, you know, films that I'd, I guess they are Spanish films. Uh, I, I don't know if they're, you know, from other origins, but you were able to actually mingle, you know, mix these other images um, and give us a glimpse of that, you know, maybe creation. So what was that part of, of uh, the, 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 the production of the film? We had to come up with, we dig in for a long time in archives and find um, I had, okay, I had an idea originally. I wanted to use excerpts from Spanish films, only Spanish films, um, film noir, Spanish films. Mm. So we have to represent somebody opening a drawer. I was going to use it from a film in the forties, you know? But I didn't want to use uh, American films. I wanted to use Spanish films because I thought probably people could, you know, see that it was from the same culture, different times, same same country. But it was difficult at the end to it didn't it didn't really fit. I used some of them. There is one beautiful shot of the of the man walking down like stairs, like a in a, in like in, you know in a maze. Uh, a Torre de los Jorobados is a very old and it's a famous great film um but it was at the end i realized that it couldn't find the perfect you know images so that's why i started using uh hitchcock or even like fritz lang metropolis mm -hmm. um and from and also very important to find films about velazquez and I was lucky to find some of them. Most of them are actually there from Spain. There's one made in Hollywood in the silent era. Wow. And it was, yeah, it's great. It was a great find. Um, it was, uh, you know, we were digging, uh, Oscar de Julian, it's the, 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 the documentarian, and he, he was looking for, you know, everywhere. And it was difficult. It was difficult. Uh, sometimes, for example, one of my obsessions was where to find um, some films made in the in the room with the mirror, mm. you know the 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 room in the Prado that it doesn't exist anymore, and we couldn't find. There was one that is shown in the film by a, a great photographer, uh, Masats, and we found that. But then I also found that there was a film made by a um, French company and a documentary about uh, Velasquez made by a French filmmaker. And they went into the room and they shot Las Meninas. Wow. And they shot the mirror. But you know what they did? Instead of showing the whole room with a mirror and Las Meninas, they probably didn't have the white lens. So they, they, they only showed the, the reflection and then they pan very fast to Las Meninas. Wow. And so they, you couldn't understand what, you know, the room, the situation, the space. 
So to make it short, I couldn't really find material. Mm. It was very difficult. I also realized that in America and UK and in France, they had a lot of documentaries and a lot of, you know, uh, newsreels. But in Spain, we had only one, Nodo. Nodo was the company that they made the newsreels. And then when they went to the Prado, they just shot few, you know, mm. details from the paintings or not. So it was very, very little poor material to, to work around. So that's one more, you know, another reason to make the stop motion and blend it together. I don't know, it was difficult. It was really a work of balance, all these elements. People talk, talking heads, the game of me in, the, in this set of this interrogation room, the quoting old films. It's, you know, it could have been a mess, really, well, I don't know. <laughs> It's not, and, um, and, and you know, we're not going to, I mean, I, I could talk about this film because, you know, for hours, because of the way you did the film and of course of all the meanings of the, of, the, of the painting, but of course, for people who haven't seen the film yet, uh, they should see it because, you know, that's addressed in the film. So I wanna ask you probably our, my, my three last questions. One is whether you think that this particular painting somehow led you to become a filmmaker because of this, you know, idea of, uh, of, of a story in this, you know, the way the, 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 the painting is representing and it's getting the viewer inside and you, you know, you're, you have all these stories going inside the, 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 the painting. So that's my first question, you know, or, or eventually if it's not this, what, you know, led you to become a filmmaker? Well, I don't think it's this painting what um, led me to become a filmmaker. To make a documentary, yes. I never thought about making a documentary and it's this particular painting who made me think about making a documentary and, le and, and use, you know, real people, real material. Then reality and fiction for me, some, you know, in works of art like Las Meninas and of film, it's just a mix. It's never really real, never really totally fiction. Mm -hmm. When you write a story, you always, you know, take in, you know, ideas from reality. When you're talking about reality, you're mixing it with your own dreams. So it becomes a mix. Which, so I've always been interested in that. But I think I was interested in filmmaking when I, early on when I was, um, a study in fine arts mm. and when I when I was painting I was interested to tell stories and, and I always got frustrated with just one sing, single image <laughs> but look at what Belati did with one single image right but <laughs> I'm not genius like Belati so I, I, I was I got frustrated I needed to create a sequence um, and that and through also my love to photography and um, mysteries of representing the real world through photography and through film. I thought, you know, if it's very interesting to represent reality and then also put my own um, fantasy into it. Mm. That's why I started making short films. What most of them are about surreal situations, stories that, you know, someone um, losing, his shadow and mm. looking for the shadow in the, in the streets of New York. Um, I have another film that deals with painting, a man in love with the painting in, at the MoMA uh, in New York also. Um, but this one for, you know, Las Meninas was the very first time that I thought I'm going to deal with real people. Mm. Meaning I have to talk to these historians, these scholars, these experts, these you know, writers and um, artists, and I have to be truthful to them and I have to represent them as real people with real emotions so that the spectator could empathize with them. And at the same time, they have to become fiction. They have to become mm -hmm. characters in a, in a film. Mm -hmm. So they have to lose their reality and become, you know, fictional characters. At the end of the film, and it's not a spoiler, but 
everyone becomes a fictional character yeah. because we are all part of this story, you know, past the history. We don't, we will never know what happened in the past. We will never know what happened in that room. And, and now this time that we live in, in the future will be read very differently than when that, you know, the way we are experiencing the, the, the present. So it's all mixed up and, and, um, and I thought, you know, that would be very interesting to, to make a documentary and bring up me, my, you know, my ideas about fiction and truth and representation and all these, these, you know, games. So, but Las Meninas let me, you know, help me to do it because in the, in the painting, all of this is much better, you know, done. So. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to ask you a, a, a question in a minute, but I'd like to know what did your uh, daughter said when she saw the film and she saw herself in this film and she saw herself as a doll in the film because, you know, again, what was her reflection about, you know, that? Well, she... She was much more interested if, uh, that to know if her name was going to be in the poster <laughs> and outside the theater in big letters. Love it. She's uh, a star. Yeah, I mean, you have, when I started this project, she was two years old. Wow. When I shot her, she was the age of the Infanta Margarita in the painting. Uh -huh five, six years old. So I thought, you know, it just, she has to be in the film. Yeah. So she's been experiencing this. I mean, my, you know, my, I, I work at home. So uh, in the living room, I have my office and yeah. she's been looking at this painting and my drawings and storyboards all over, you know, for years. So for her, it's not, it's like just regular yeah. stuff. Um, it's, I think she will, I mean, she, she, I mean, I can show with drawings that she has made about Las Meninas and wow. very, very interesting. Yeah. But uh, a comic book, I don't know. But, um, but somehow she got the spirit of Velasquez if he wanted to get to nobility, you know, thinking about, you know, oh, yeah. her name on the, on the, on the credits. There was yeah, well, something they, about, you know, understanding that the value of her presence is only equated to the size of her name. So interesting that there's something about, you know, that possible story of Velasquez trying to place himself, you know, equal to the royals in the, in the film. Except. We are all narcissistic. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and this new generation, they are only preoccupied about being famous and being there and, you know, it's just become well, an image. It's like they only want to be an image that it's, it's others can look at. It's interesting that at some point, one of the experts says the Infanta Margarita wouldn't have been famous at all if it wasn't for this picture. And you think in terms of, you know, of course, today's social media, how much of fame comes just from an image. And, uh, and maybe, you know, this is a precursor of, you know, it's a very, very early version of uh, some sort of, you know, Facebook or Instagram or something uh, uh, where, you know, literally uh, catapulted, um, you know, the Infanta and of course Velasquez for the rest of the history of, of art. You know, many, many more things are going to be done and this painting still is going to have all this, you know, magic and, um, and, and brilliancy. Um, but I think, you know, and, and, and these are my two like, last questions is, what did the experts said or what was their reaction when they, well, the experts' reactions, the audience in general in Spain, you know, especially because it's such a famous painting and everybody has something, you know, kind of probably a personal connection with Las Meninas. Um, and what do you think Velázquez would have said if he <laughs> seen you know, sitting in a room and watching this film. I'm afraid of Velasquez. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't know. 
I can see it's it does the true mystery for me because I always thought is he was he funny was he serious mm. Mm. was he I mean I think that these people is with Lana told me with Lana Alpers the historians the one you like that she's very <laughs> emphatic uh, she's such a character she's such a great historian and you know a beautiful person and she she said we have to understand these people as strange people mm. they're strange we cannot get to them like all oh, their friends like we can understand them there's like they're strange people we will never understand them because it's all different time different you know society yeah we can get to for example to we share problems like okay children die at that time children died the king the most powerful person in the world they could not help their children all the children he had they were dying mm. so that's something that you know touches you but other things like for example the laugh because i don't know it's like i don't think he could understand anything he would be watching this film with him this is nonsense like he couldn't understand the editing or anything i mean some people would say oh he he was very intelligent he probably loved it the whole thing or what i don't uh, I went to the Louvre, um, they had an exhibition of Velázquez like five years ago in, in Paris. Um, they had a, a portrait, I think it's in, ba in, in, in Valencia, and it's one of probably the, with, with the Mas Meninas, is the only other portrait that they believe is by the hand of Velázquez. And it's a very serious face, he's looking at you. I was terrified. I was looking at him for a while in the gallery thinking like he, he was looking at me, how do you dare to make a film <laughs> about this painting? No, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I know what the historians, some of the people that they are in the film, they thought about it. And Jonathan Brown, I love Jonathan Brown. He, he loved the film. He was so proud of it. Um, Manuela Mena, who, mm. who you know, the, the other historian <laughs> who was fighting, they would be fighting, intellectually fighting. She loved the film. Both thought that themselves, they were, you know, winning the <laughs> competition. <laughs> the, some others, they, you know, they, they criticized me certain, you know, mistakes. There are some mistakes. And, I, you know, he says you can I'm, you cannot get everything perfect but um and that's also hard. that's hard. yeah it's hard and and also ultimately the problem was that i could not give them enough time to all of them i had about 60 hours of material uh there are about 20 people talking in the film mm. some of them i have interviews of four hours wow the material is incredible for historians. I mean, I don't know if someday it will be available, but it's really, oh. really interesting. Uh, there are many, many subjects I couldn't talk about. Um, and they had to, I had to really oh. reduce the time of some people. We're ready for the painting, you know, the sequel. Two. <laughs> you know, coming up. No, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what did the, the audience, um, you know, the, the film was at the um, Valladolid Film Festival. And of course it was nominated for a Goya for best documentary. Um, and, you know, what was like the reaction of just regular people who, like I said, I, they might have this sort of, you know, Las Meninas is a little bit um, something that every Spanish person, you know, believes is theirs because it's, you know, one of the most important paintings, if not the most. Um, so, um, you know, what was some of the reactions? Uh, surprisingly, um, well, most of the, the audience were, um, you know, mature audience, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> because young people are not really interested in this, uh, in documentaries, first and secondly, about painting. When some, when young people saw the film, I was surprised that they got very, very interested. In fact, yesterday, um, uh, Javier, the director of photography, who is in Toulouse in France, 
um, he was shown the film in a, in a, in a high school mm. and they, they got so interested in discussing the whole thing, you know, the, all the theories and everything. I, I'm, that's, the, that's the problem, I think, is how to get to the audience nowadays. Mm. Like, there's so much stuff. Mm -hmm. And we, we really, um, in, in Madrid, we uh, released the film in theaters. Mm. And, and it was actually, it, it played very well. Uh, a lot of people went. And the problem is that you only have about two weeks, three yeah. weeks because another Hollywood movie comes and you're out of the theater. But, other, you know, it's many days, the, 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 uh, the, the room, the, 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 the theater, theater. Where, yeah, where what, what the film was uh, playing, it was the, the, the most crowded. I mean, the, the, we had the most, you know, the most people in the, in the complex. I can't believe that, yeah. But it, it's, you know, but it was, it, it's very difficult. Distribution is very difficult nowadays. Thanks to the theaters, though, we got the attention of the media. Mm. So many radios talk about the film and they have discussions. They invite me to talk about it mm. and television. So finally people started to know about it. And that's when we got into the Goyas and we got onto the, just today I got the, the, an award for best screenplay from the Writers Guild of Spain. Wow, congratulations. Okay. Yeah. So really give me a lot of satisfaction to know, first of all, that the film got, you know, fine, is finding an audience. And secondly, that really they, they see the work behind it and they appreciate it. So I'm very I have to I have to say the film is going to keep on traveling. We are very lucky because we are having the North American premiere of the film. And I'm sure, I'm sure is going to be playing in many, many other places. And, um, and I know, you know, uh, this, of course, we are recording. And so we don't have the questions of, you know, from the audience, but I promise you that if we do have, you know, some, you know, inquiries because I know people will have questions about this fantastic sort of game and of, of, of you know film and, and, and painting and art and representation. It's such a clever um, reflection about uh, art in general and uh, I have to say I, I want to thank you because really this film you know I'm a filmmaker myself and of course we are in a film festival and this is a film that that just opens, you know, the, the, the room for conversation to, you know, we can spend hours. I can, sp you know, definitely I can spend hours with you, uh, Andres. I want to thank you uh, for being part of the Cine Latino at Home, this very special virtual edition of the festival we have thank this you. year. Um, we, we make the promise that when you have, you know, maybe the, your next film, we hopefully host you in uh, Minneapolis um, and, uh, you know, discover the, the, the city. And uh, we wish you all the best uh, with the film. And, um, you know, like I said, we, you, you will hear about us and we know, I know that we will hear many, many, many more times about you and the, the film and your career is going to, you know, keep on going many higher places. Well, thank you for having the, the film and, and, you know, and giving me this, this chance to talk about it. It was great. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto, Andrés. Gracias. Nos vemos, ojalá pronto en, en persona. Muchas gracias. Gracias a vosotros.